What's up guys, today we're here with a tutorial for Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna show you guys how to use the speed ramp tool and do that with the sound effect, if you know what I mean by that. So if you watch like skateboard edits, snowboard, surf, wakeboard, anything like that, you've probably seen the slow-mo effect where it kind of sounds like um, that's basically what's called a speed ramp. So it doesn't just go straight into slow motion clip. It kind of like ramps, it gets there gradually and it gradually comes out of it. And the sound does the same thing. Now Final Cut Pro is by far the easiest software to speed ramp with that sound effect. Uh, you can do it in all the other ones, but I know in Premiere you have to send the clip to After Effects to get it to ramp with the audio and then send it back to Premiere. And if you're like me, if you're editing long form like skateboard, snowboard, wakeboard projects, you're probably speed ramping quite a bit and it really significantly slows down my workflow. And I would say that along with having to pay over $500 a year to use Premiere and After Effects, that's the number one reason I use Final Cut Pro is for its ability to speed ramp and do it so easily. Cool, so we can go ahead and hop into Final Cut Pro real quick. I'll start a new project. Just call this speed ramp test. And then I'm going to make this project 1080 is fine in uh, either 30p or 29.97. Oops, speed ramp test, nice. Um, I pretty much always export to 30p, even if I filmed in 60 or 120. I just personally think it looks better. Uh, all the edits that I grew up watching were all exported in 30p. And also, we're kind of used to seeing video footage in either 24 or 30 frames a second. It kind of looks weird to see clips played back in 120 or 60 frames a second, I think, personally. I'm just not used to it, so I'm going to keep exporting my stuff to 30p for the foreseeable future. So right on, for this effect to work and kind of work well, you need footage that is at least double your, uh, you know, slow motionable. So here we have 60 frames a second, basically anything over uh, 50, you're gonna be able to get pretty decent slow-mo out of. Here at 60 frames a second, since our final project is in 30, we're gonna be able to get 50% slow-mo and it's gonna look buttery smooth, which is great, that's what we want. Um, I had a clip picked out here of uh, this is just some clips from the from a day at the lighthouse that I had. All right, cool. So here's kind of like a nice uh, hack, little layback. Sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that on my timeline. Let it render out real quick. Shouldn't take but a second. Okay, right on. So now that I have this clip right here on my timeline, I can go ahead and slow motion it. So if I just wanted a hard cut slow-mo, what I could do is I could get out my blade tool. I do that by clicking B or right there, blade, and kind of cut it right there and right there, and then click this middle section, slow 50%. And this is certainly cool. You see it has that hard point where the slow-mo starts and stops. Um, and if you listen to it with the audio, Right, you can kind of tell it's got those hard stop and start and stop points. So I'll just undo those. Uh, what I personally like and think is a better effect in most situations when you're filming board sports is actually to use the range select tool. So you can go ahead to your little toolbox right here, get out range selection, or just click R on your keyboard. Um, that'll get you there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab what I want of the clip to slow-mo. So everything in there right on. Then I'm gonna slow-mo that, I'm gonna put it in 50%. And you see these bars come up here, up top. So that's kind of where our speed ramp is occurring. So instead of that, the clip going from 100% straight to 50%, it actually kind of ramps or goes there smoothly, basically where the uh, timeline is shaded in right here. So if we watch that back, right, you see it's a little more gradual. Now we still don't have that sound effect to go with it, that uh, that's actually super easy to get though. All we have to do is select our clip. I just clicked A, um, or you can go up here and go back to the select tool, select the clip, go back to this right here, our little um, faster, slower stopwatch thing. Um, and then right here, this one preserve pitch, it's checked right now. If we uncheck that, you actually see it changed our, uh, our audio levels there. So if you watch like right here, when I click this button, they're gonna go down. Bam, that's because it's trying to preserve the pitch of that clip. So when I uncheck it, bam, it stays pretty level. 
Nice. We dropped a few frames there, but I think you get the point. Um, you can still hear that kind of uh, here. The only sound that that's really happening to is the wind itself. This effect is definitely more pronounced and obvious if you're working with like a skateboard clip or a snowboard clip or somebody sliding a metal rail. Uh, or like ollieing on concrete, it's much more kind of obvious and pronounced, but it still looks cool and sounds good even with like surf clips. And it's just kind of a homage to like the skate culture and videos that I grew up watching and loving. So that's awesome. That's one way to use um, <clears throat> the speed ramp tool. Another way we can actually use it to speed up footage. So here I have like a drone clip of just the water looking all abstract and cool like, just filming the ocean. So what I can do here is click R to get out my range select tool. And I just want to leave enough space on either side of this clip so I can uh, still trim it a little bit, but anywhere from like, so that starts at zero, goes to like two seconds on each side, that's good. And then I can go here. Um, you can do whatever speed you want. I generally find eight or 20 works good. For this particular length of clip, I kind of want something in the middle. So the other thing we can do is go to custom. Um, and if I want 12 times slow-mo, I type in 1200%, so that's just playing the clip 12 times faster, basically. Um, why isn't that working? There we go. Um, sweet, so now I have that all set. So you see, it's just kind of playing. Well, actually, we'll let that render out real quick. It's not the easiest on the computer to speed up a clip 1200%. So here we have one or two seconds, waves kind of going by at normal speed, and everything happens really fast. The drone does a twist and kind of stops and ends in that spot. So I actually want a little less on the start and a decent bit less on the ending. So basically right when it kind of stops going slow, it ends. And that can actually be a really good transition too. Like if I put it here at the beginning, Right, we have a nice abstract shot of the waves crashing around, it speeds up, and then it fades into this next clip um, of a surfer. Something I can do, I can put like a zoom effect in there. So go ahead and throw that right there. All right, so we kind of got those black bars just because of uh, how I filmed this clip. I can go ahead and just make that a little bigger real quick. That's not something you have to do, that's just because of the video format in which I filmed the clip. So cool, now we got some abstract waves, really fast, kind of weird, like almost like psychedelic looking, kind of weird wave effect. And then that just sets the vibe. We know it's like a water related project, it's in the ocean, but we don't just go straight into the surfing, kind of helps set the mood of the project and what the thing's gonna be like a little bit. Yeah, and the zoom effect is really cool. Now because this drone clip doesn't have any sound, and I would probably do this anyway with that effect, but I can go into my sound effects, and I just have these downloaded from like a third party website, but I can just throw a uh, like a whoosh sound effect in there. Those generally go really good with like zoom transitions. So maybe I just make this a little bit shorter. Cool, so I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it's kind of like whoosh, as it uh, as it zooms in. So we play it back from the beginning, nice slow water, quick move, that right there, the whoosh, and then we're kind of into our surfing clip, bam, we have that nice speed ramp on the slow-mo. And yeah, that's great. That's the first like nine seconds of a surf video right there. Um, yeah, right on. I hope you guys uh, appreciated and learned something from this uh, little tutorial. Final Cut Pro is definitely the easiest software to do the speed ramp with the audio. But again, you can do it with any software. There's tutorials out there on it. Uh, but it is just more difficult and more time consuming. It's definitely the easiest and the best workflow to do it in Final Cut. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more tutorials on Final Cut and how to do board sports style stuff, I'm pretty good at the more like grunge and less cinematic rule following style editing. So if you're into like skate and snowboard edits, you want to learn how to do more effects like this, please shoot me a text, leave a comment. Uh, and just let me know that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. Uh, it'll help stoke me up to keep making more of these. Uh, if you haven't, please click that subscribe button right down below. Turn on post notifications. Drop this video a like. It really does make a difference. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.